The one thing I do truly love about our industry is its diversity, from business models to fleets, to situations at respective carriers. No airline is truly the same, and their situations are consistently adjusting. That is why examining companies that have undergone trying times is of heightened interest. And over the 2010s, one could argue there was none more so than Norwegian. Most would often label it as one of the unlucky carriers going around. Why? Well, because a substantial amount of their problems weren't necessarily self-inflicted, somewhat related to the equipment that they were flying. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Over 80% of regular viewers have not hit the button yet, and it would certainly mean a lot. The 2010s were a turbulent time for the airline, with troubles coming left, right, and center. But it was arguably the second half of the 2010s when the difficulties skyrocketed. At the same time, the airline was forced to ground its 787s back in 2013, so let's not totally ignore that. But by 2018, during the height of the Trent 1000 engine issues, it was also forced to ground the Type for a second time and likely a more prolonged period. Ultimately, for an airline like Norwegian, their international and therefore transatlantic operations were hardly massive, so they relied heavily on one aircraft series, and no other wide body to do that job than, unfortunately, in this case, the 787. So let's say if the series incurred problems, which it did do, it would substantially affect them, and when they were given no choice but to ground units, they resorted to High Fly and the Airbus A380 for operations operations on the London Gatwick to New York JFK route, what many people believe to be a potential good idea to help balance some of the demand losses that they were seeing. Norwegian's A380 operations shocked many. When Highfly acquired the aircraft secondhand for a short period, the takers of the aircraft on a charter basis, or even say a short-term lease, were small. It eventually led it to being removed, but in that short period where High Fly had the aircraft on its hands, Norwegian were an airline that decided that they would go ahead and operate it, with the immense capacity being a short-term answer that they needed. However, it was anything but a short-term solution and one that went well. The lease, you could argue, was a bit of a disaster for Norwegian and only worsened their difficult position alongside reputation. Remember, the aircraft was slated to fly between Gatwick and New York JFK only. It seemed like quite a simple enough solution to the ongoing problem affecting their 787 Dreamliners. But massive flight delays during these A380 flights were incurred due to airport restrictions in New York maybe not necessarily being factored in when the acquisition of the plane on a lease took place. Which meant that with another A380 arriving at the same time, the airport was busy enough. It simply couldn't handle the boarding procedures, the baggage and also traffic through the airport. Forbes reported in 2018 that dedicated gates were not even present for the high fly A380, meaning delays went through the night, sometimes into the morning. What was meant to be a solution to the problem actually only saw further delays and costs incurred. Norwegian's reputation as well was going down the drain, as no customer wants to be delayed through the night, and this was not something that happened only a handful of times. It was a, con it was a constant theme, and therefore has continued ramifications on future services as the delays keep going on and on. And while the 787 still remained grounded and there wasn't really a solution that seemed imminent, away from the engine, we were beginning to see quality assurance troubles lead to more groundings, delivery delays, and continued inspections. So for Norwegian and their 787, it just wasn't really in a good space. Now, their A380 operations would eventually end, which many were pleased with. However, for Norwegian, their problems were only just starting. While moving, away brief while moving away briefly from the 787, as I know that is still the focus, and even the A380 coverage, when the first MAX went down with Lion Air in 2018, yes, there were immediate concerns, but as we know, the response probably wasn't as it should have been. This was until the early stages of 2019, when the second 737 MAX went down, causing a mass grounding of the type. Safety is of paramount importance. That will always 
always remain true, but its overall impact on customers was huge. For Norwegian to go from having to ground its 787 to now also being forced to ground its MAX, which thankfully wasn't the only aircraft it had remaining, but was becoming a core part of its bid to become more efficient, was huge. There's no other way you can necessarily put it. Driven by this and ongoing difficulties with the 787 regarding its engines and quality assurance, Norwegian was really starting to struggle financially. However, it would be naive to focus on the aircraft problems and say it wasn't all, say, self-inflicted. Norwegian was rightly or wrongly operating a model that was pretty risky for international flights, and I still think today, in 2023, would still be a model that would have elements of risk around it. Mastering it can be quite difficult. They were going up against legacy carriers and offering low-cost flights, which can be challenging at the best of times to maintain, and that it was becoming with everything else they were dealing with. Norwegian's losses were mounting, with pressures on every single angle of the business, until at the end of 2018, reports emerged that the company only had days to live. It survived those few days, but had to undergo a major restructuring, and Norwegian would eventually decide to really transform their business by removing the 787s altogether. Yes, that means that they would no longer fly international transatlantic services and not have a wide body in their network. It was a big decision that didn't go unnoticed by the aviation world. The ending of long-haul flights was revealed at the beginning of 2021, nearly one year after the emergence of the pandemic. So it's not like these 787s had been flying for that year, they were grounded for some time already. However, deciding to remove the types would see a shift in focus to solely their European network, in what was described as a simplified business structure to cut costs, streamline, and become once more a profitable business. This rebuild has been a long time in the making, and included many aircraft being removed, not just the 787s, but an overall downsizing of the business to get to a point where they can be profitable and sustainable. Thankfully for Norwegian, their transformation has thus far been, you could argue, successful. While there have been bumps in the road like any carrier, especially that of the global pandemic, following a tough 2010s and the removal of the 787s, they've really refocused their strategy to align with demand levels that they see in the European space. Instead of scrapping aircraft and fighting for survival like they once were doing, they're now plotting as far as aircraft orders, which is fantastic to see and definitely shows the changing of the wind at the airline. Norwegian is definitely a story of ups and downs, perseverance, funding, and key business decisions to reduce overall costs. But at its very core, you can take a look at the Boeing 787 as being a pivotal part in potentially their downfall, but also their emergence from that. No doubt that is thanks to the removal of this series, but it has been a fascinating story to tell. If you have any thoughts on Norwegian as a carrier within the aviation industry, maybe even on those A380 operations that were just a little bit of a disaster, you can let me know down below in the comments. Thanks a lot for watching and your continued support here on the channel. Do take care and be safe and I'll see you next time. And we'll fly.